Hi folks, Ray Gianelli here, and today I want to talk about servicing an Onkyo M-5090. This is a 200 watt per channel power amplifier, and when I first received it for service several years ago, it had multiple problems. Uh, one of the output stages had apparently shorted out and the transistors have been replaced by aftermarket transistors. Now this is usually not recommended, so I changed all those out and I noticed that when you turn the amplifier on, it immediately came on, it didn't go through the protect cycle where it stays in protect for a few seconds and then comes out. And I discovered what had happened is somebody had bypassed the protection stage and I found out they had bypassed it because the channel that had the uh, bad transistors had a terrible amount of offset. Now, this amplifier is a servo amplifier, meaning there's an active servo loop that corrects offset. There is no adjustment. Typically, amplifiers like this have one or less millivolts of offset. This had many volts. I don't recall how long, how many volts. It was several years ago. But the problem is, and I'll show you. This is the servo, and the problem is that we had a failure in the power supply that feeds the servo op amps. Now, if we look at this, our op amp power rails are fed from the output of the regulator here on the positive side and here on the negative side and this transistor had failed giving us unbalanced voltages to our op amp giving us offset once i corrected that and restored normal operation of the protection circuit the amplifier worked what came out of protection no offset both channels biased everybody was happy Fast forward a few years and my friend contacted me saying the guy he had sold the amplifier to decided he wanted to play with the bias. As far as I know, he doesn't even have a meter. He was trying to do it by ear and he said he had a terrible amount of hum on one channel. When I got the amplifier, I discovered that he had turned the bias on one channel way up. And uh, now when I got it back and tried to bias it, I had no control over the bias at all. And we're going to take a look at it. So first, I'm going to turn the camera off, move things so you can see what happens when I turn it on and what kind of symptoms we're getting. So hold on just a moment, please. Okay, I'm going to turn the amplifier on. And if you watch the meters, you'll see that they start out kind of a, a reddish orange. And when it comes out of protection, they turn green. So I'm going to flip it on now. Amplifiers in protection and now it's out. So we're gonna zoom in on the oscilloscope because I want you to see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put 100 millivolts in the input of this amplifier. I want you to take a look. The left channel looks good, okay? But look at the crossover distortion that we have in the right channel. And I'm going to turn the camera off, reposition everything, and show you what's going on here. Okay, I've got the amplifier turned upside down to expose the bottom, and I am looking at the bias test points of the left and right channel. Left channel is looking good. We got about 9.7 millivolts, and right channel we have almost no bias whatsoever now i'm going to zoom back out so you can see both the meters and the amplifier and i'll show you what happens when we adjust things okay left channel bias adjustment we're at 10 we're supposed to be at 13 millivolts when it warms up it'll be right about there but we have adjustment range. Right channel, however, we have no adjustment whatsoever. So now I'm gonna put a schematic up here and show you what I found. 
and what I believe the problem is full disclosure I spent a lot of time on this I don't believe in filming it you have better things to do and I, it just makes me look like an idiot so <laughs> anyway I'm gonna take a moment and set up the schematic so we can take a look at it okay here's a copy of the schematic and uh, while every manufacturer has their own methods of doing it what Onkyo did was they gave us one channel, fairly typical, but they didn't write any of the voltages in. In order to find the expected voltages, we have to look at another part of the schematic, and they show the transistors with the expected voltages at the emitter basin collector or the source drain and gate. So what I did was, I took the voltages for the affected area we're interested in, and I wrote the expected voltages in blue and the measured voltages in red. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of discrepancy here. And highlighted here is the bias path. As you can see, we, we need to have 1.7 volts here or 1.8 volts here. And we have 0.38. So after taking a lot more measurements and looking around, I looked at this string here. Now this should be a fairly easy voltage to figure out. We have two bias diodes in series on the positive side of the rail and two bias diodes in series on the negative side of the rail. What I discovered was I had replaced all of these, which is a common practice. These are known troublemakers and they should be replaced with two 1N4148 diodes in series. So I had two pairs of 1N4148s replaced here and here. And one of the diodes in here shorted. I don't know if it happened when the gentleman monkeyed with the bias or if it was simple uh, infant mortality in the, in the diode I replaced. But anyhow, I'm going to show you where I measured those and we'll replace it and see if it fixes our problem. Okay, so we have one set of diodes over here and another set over here. And if we measure the voltage drop across these diodes, you can see that we get about 2.7 volts. Now each diode drops between 0.5 and 0.6, so that's, that's right. Okay. Now if we look at the other set, however, we're only dropping about 1.98 volts. And the problem is, one of the diodes here is shorted, so I'm going to kill the power. Okay. We're going to go into our diode test mode. And if we look here, we have a good diode drop of about 0.6 volts. And if we go over here, we have a shorted diode. Okay, so... I'm going to replace this diode, I'm going to take a moment and get set up and I'll solder in a pair of these and then we'll see what we get. Okay, so I've soldered two diodes in series and if you look at my fluke right here, you'll see we drop about 1.2, 1.23 volts. Okay, and that little guy looks like this. And we're going to remove the pair with the shorted diode to replace it with this and see if that fixes our bias problem. And if it doesn't, you're, not, you're never going to see this video until I figure out what's wrong, so don't worry about it. <laughs> but I believe this is what our problem's going to be. All right, let's pop these connectors out. And we should be able to turn this over and unsolder that. Okay, now I wear a magnifying visor just because I find I do neater work when I can actually see what I'm doing. Let's see, our diodes are going to be right about down here. Pliers, will these work? Okay.
Okay, we have our diode polarities installed correctly. Always good to double check your work. Okay, now I'm going to bring this up in the dim bulb tester because whenever I do any work at all, I always put it on the dim bulb first. As an engineer friend of mine once told me, it's easier to stay out of trouble than it is to get out of trouble. So we're going to see if it comes up correctly on the dim bulb. If it does, we'll go directly to full power. Bulb glows really brightly because this thing has a lot of filter capacitors, but it's dropped down, came out of protection. We're looking good. Okay, now we're gonna go to full power and this is the moment of the truth. We're gonna have to see if we can dial our, offs, our bias. And so let's just step back here because we're gonna be watching the meters now. Okay. All right. Okay, now let's see if we can dial in some bias on the right channel. Left channel, starting to climb up as the amplifier warms up. Let's see if we can bring anything on the right channel. Hey, look at that. We've got about six, seven volts there. Millivolts, sorry about that. It's early, I didn't sleep well. So let's see what our signal looks like. And our signal's looking pretty good. Look at that. Remember we had that crossover distortion? It's gone. Okay. Well, let's see what we can get this thing to do. Okay. Okay, we got 50 watts of channel. Eighty five hundred and thirteen, hundred and fifty, hundred and eighty five. There's two hundred watts of channel. Now the distortion appears to be high. I'm not using a low distortion signal source. So what you're seeing is actually the signal source. And I don't know if you can hear that, but my load resistors are singing a little bit at one kilohertz. But there you go. We've got 200 watts of channel. And if we drop the voltage down on our signal source, you can see we have good clean sine waves now. So, the question I had is why did that diode fail? Now, it could have been when that guy monkeyed with the bias, or it could have simply been infant mortality in one of the diodes. Um, that was a new diode, right? those were all new diodes I put in. It could have just been him, from him playing in the bias, or it could have just been a part that failed. Anyhow, I'm gonna run this amp for a few days. I'm gonna have fun doing it. And uh, as always, I enjoyed making this video, and um, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks. Have a good one.